the heart of the meek, humbled my soul, and believe me, that don't make me weak. I was dead on the streets, cause the streets had nothing but death and violence, and I said, fall back. Deserve to know you, but I, I'm a witness that you did this, and I'm brand new, so I, I'm ready to go, and I'ma tell the world what they need to know. I'm a slave to myself, but you let me go. I tried getting high, but it left me low. You did what they could never do. You cleaned up my soul and gave me life. I'm so brand new, and that's all that matters. I, I ain't love you first, but you first love me. Come on, in my heart I cursed you, but you set me free. I gave you no reason to give me new seasons. To give no breathing, no. but you hung there bleeding. You died for my lies and my cheating, my lust and my greed. Lord. What is a man huh? that you mindful of him? What? And what do I have to deserve this love? Yeah. Trying to make the moments last, holding on to the past. But like a hero in a dream, Christ came and he rescued me. Now I'ma tell the world, tell the world, tell them. I'ma tell it everywhere. Carrot kindness keep coming, yeah. and your love is so unconditional. Like it butterflies in my stomach. Uh, I got the old me in a rear view, got a new me, got a clear view. Uh, that was so dead, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Too deep to sin to come near you. But you drew me in, uh, you clean me up, yeah. so take me home, home. beam me up. Yeah. Before you do, just let me tell the truth and let these folks know that I done seen your love and it's everlasting, yeah. infinite. It goes on and on, you can't measure it, can't quench your love, they can't separate us uh, from the love of God, there's no estimate. Uh, my face looked the same, my frame yeah. rearranged, but I'm changed. I promise I ain't the same. Right, your love right. so deep, you suffered and took pain. Took you died pain. on the cross to give me a new name. Jesus. Ain't nothing like I seen before. I got a beam of glory. I was low down and dirty, but you clean me, Lord. You adopted me, you keep rocking me. I'ma tell the world, and ain't nobody stopping me. Trying to make the moments last. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. We're going to continue in the I Am series. So get your Bibles, get a piece of paper, get you a pen or highlighter. Get ready to dig into the word of God this morning. Amen. So therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Make sure you're tapping that screen, share the live. We're going to get into I am, I am the gate for the sheep this morning. I am the gate for the sheep. We talked about I am the good shepherd yesterday, so welcome in. God bless you. I hope you guys are excited. Man, God is so good. When we dig into his word, when we trust in his word, it opens up doors, avenues, and and paths to his righteousness. So welcome in. Make sure you're tapping that screen and sharing the live, guys. If you carry a heavy burden, lay it down and put it back in his hands. I'm here to tell you at your lowest, you can know that he's still working when you don't understand. When we don't understand. I know that it's harder to recognize it when you're going through something that's got you down. I used to get angry, but not today. Today, I'm a prayer, surrender the doubts. I'm hearing the chatter, the devil's been talking, but you can't let that get inside of your head. It may be a mess, but there is a message. One day you'll see it and understand. We've been battling something we cannot control, carrying things that we need to let go. Open your heart. 
heart and surrender it now it may be the heaviest weight on your soul i'm talking to someone that may need to hear it i've been in your shoes and i've driven the road don't let it consume you don't battle alone that type of depression's a slippery slope wake up anybody want to talk about it i'm right here never be the runner but your promise that i've been clear walk through the valley of the shadows of the creek without a paddle but i made it out oh i've been there if you're dealing with a lot i get there you ain't gotta do it on your own that line is open when you pray just grab the phone if you carry a heavy burden lay it down and put it back Welcome in, welcome in, welcome in, guys. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Let's get ready to dig into the Word of God this morning. Amen. Welcome in, Brother E. I see you, brother. Welcome in, everybody. God bless each and every one of you. Back and forth, I want to figure this out. Do I need to make a turn to take a different route? I've been overthinking, stressed out with the lack of patience, trying to understand what this is about. I'm backed up to the wall with no options, battling negative thoughts in my conscience. Tell me that there is a purpose through all of the pain. It's harder to see if I'm honest. What if I told you what Sister to Priscilla up in the house. God bless you, sister. And when it's all over, you'll see why I did it. Then maybe you'll see it's a blessing. You gotta push hard when it's harder to pray. When you feel like it's over, there's always a way. I thought that my story had come to an end. He looked over and said, I'm just turning the page. Even when I don't know where I'm going and I lack the directions. All things are working for good is the message. Trust in the Lord and believe it, especially when you just don't understand it, man. If you're dealing with a lot, I get that. You ain't gotta do it on your own. That line is open when you pray, just grab the phone. If you carry a heavy burden, lay it down and put it back in his hands. I'm here to tell you at your lowest, you can know that he's still working when you don't understand. When we don't understand. When we don't understand. When we don't understand. When we don't understand. One more song, we're going to get into the Word of God. Go ahead and open your Bibles to John chapter 10. John chapter 10 this morning. Turn to John chapter 10. Good morning, good morning. I see you in the chat. God bless you, God bless you. You can't stop, can't stop, won't stop. Where the brakes at? I give him that ditty bop. Like, take that, take that, take that, take that. I'ma put in work. I'ma do that ASAP. Throw my faith in rap. But it say, don't say that, huh? What I'ma turn down for? I feel like Shaq and not for. In that back border like Kobe and Toronto, huh? Driving 81, yo, I dropped the 88. Ricky Bobby, shaking bake, sleeping on it, should've stayed awake, huh? Everybody make mistakes like VJs, trying to say my name, it's Minio. Say it with me, Minio. Okay, great, two forks high, raise the stakes. Risk it all, I take the hate, this the winning team. Get the Gatorade, my guy good, but he's not safe, no. They try to shut us down and it ain't gonna slide. Only thing I fear is God and he on my side. That's the confidence of God, cause he got me. That's why I really feel like you can't stop me. Kendrick, never be the rapper rock got from Hendrix. Top 10 alive, you will never be mentioned. Why I aim so high, I won't survive the trenches. Plus, you a Christian, Andy. They will never listen, Andy. Plus, we a pigment, Andy. <laughs> you don't got skill, you a gimmick, Andy. Well, if I listen to you and everything you put in my ear, I'll be living like, what up, shut up, could I'll be paralyzed by fear. Huh? Ain't that the truth? If I quit, the only way I lose, I got two choices when I do this. Make moves or make excuses. Huh? If you know who I'm talking about, then you got me. My biggest enemy is me, and even I can't stop me. They try to shut us down, and it ain't gonna slide. Only thing I fear is God, and he on my side. That's the confidence of God, cause he got me. That's why I really feel like you can't stop me. That's all you got. Stop needing your nails. 
stop me, oh no, can't stop, oh no, won't stop me. I said if I cannot stop me, then you'll never stop me, oh no, can't stop, oh no, won't stop. I said if I cannot stop me, then you'll never stop me, oh no, can't stop, oh no, won't stop. I said if I cannot stop me, then you'll never stop me, oh no. Good morning and welcome in. Welcome in to hearing the word of God this morning. Get your Bibles ready, get your drink ready, kick your feet up, and get ready to learn what God has to say for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome in. Are you guys ready to dig into the word of God this morning and really see what God is saying for each and every one of us? I played that last song, You Can't Stop Me, right? The devil's going to throw things in your way. He's going to put hiccups in your way. He's going to put things in your path that makes you feel like you're defeated. But with God, we are not defeated. Amen. Amen. The devil can only try to hinder us, but he can't stop us. So we should be shouting with the joy of the Lord this morning. And, and that's what I'm doing. You know, I've been out sick. Um, I've been sick for the past, I don't know, um, almost 30 days I've been sick. And the doctors have no idea what it is, but I know what it is. The devil's mad that his word is going out, right? He's mad that God's word is going out and it's penetrating the hearts of of the believer it's pricking them and changing them to be seeking the righteousness of the kingdom so this morning we're going to be talking about i am the gate for the sheep amen so let's open in prayer and then we're going to get right into the word of God this morning. So dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for allowing us to come together as fellowship. Father, we thank you for the multiple platforms that we're on. We thank you for giving us the wisdom and the knowledge and the courage to step out and spread your word, Father. Father, we just ask for a boldness in us. But Father, we ask this morning that our hearts be softened and our ears be opened, that we're able to receive your word this morning, Father. Father, your word is what penetrates the deepest of our marrows, that creates the new heart and gives us a renewed of mind. So Father, allow your word to be spoke this morning. Allow us to see your presence and feel your grace and mercy. We ask this all in Jesus's holy name. Amen and amen. Are you guys ready? Are you ready to get into the word this morning? Are you excited to get into the word and, and truly understand what it is that God has for each and every one of us? So as we start today, we've just talked about Jesus stating that he was the good shepherd. He said, I am the good shepherd. I taught on this one yesterday. And for any of you guys that have missed any of these, we are on YouTube. All these lessons are on YouTube. You just got to go to Living Water Bible Church. It's a black logo, and it says Living Water Bible Church, and, and you'll see my bald head on there. Um, so you'll know you're in the right place. But now we're going to look at when Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. And we're going to be coming out of John chapter 10 this morning. We're going to read verses 1 through 30. So there's quite a bit of reading, but a lot of information to unpack. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So let's look at John chapter 10 and we're going to start in verse 1. And it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. 
All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, and them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doeth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. <coughs> This commandment have I have power to lay it down. Or this commandment I have received of my father. There was a division therefore among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. The word of the Lord this morning. John chapter 10, 1 through 30. John chapter 10, 1 through 30. Now in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 5, Jesus spoke a parable which is not easy to interpret, right? And some see the sheepfold as the world. And, and for others, it's the church. And for others, it's heaven. And in one interpretation, the sheep are all mankind. In another, only the Jews, right? All would agree that the shepherd is Jesus. But who is the porter? Who is the porter? Who are the thieves? And how can Jesus be both the shepherd and the door of the sheepfold at the same time? However, if we remember the context and also that it is the message that controls the sheep farming symbols, not vice versa, we won't go far for very long, okay? We won't go wrong for very long. Now, in verses 5 through 10, Jesus speaks of a flock of sheep protected in a sheepfold or an enclosure, right? So when it says sheepfold, it's talking about an enclosure, possibly a fenced in uh, part of the field. Maybe it was outside of the stable, but they were in some kind of enclosure. And there was a warning that came against the rustlers, right? And the rustlers are the thieves, so who might get in and steal the sheep? And he likens himself to the shepherd who constitutes a door, stopping thieves entering and sheep escaping, saying, I am the door to the sheepfold. So this is the passage and the I am saying that we're going to study today. And in verses 11 through 30, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Explaining that the good shepherd cares for the sheep and will even give his life for their well-being in this passage. And I am saying we will think about next week when we get into the next I am topic, right? So to understand this teaching, we need to almost put all that is in our 21st century mind about sheep farms and sheep to one side, okay? Okay. We're not listening to Jesus, the 21st century American who thinks of farms and thousands of sheep using dogs and motorcycles to round them up uh, to be put on huge semi trailers, taking them off to to uh, abitators or to auctions or to be shipped overseas. 
were listening to Jesus in whose mind a shepherd was a person who owned between 20 to 100 sheep. He spent his days walking around with them, making sure they were safe, well-fed, watered, nurtured, taken care of. And he knew each sheep by name, and he prized them mainly for their wool. Okay, Sheep was, is, is the production of wool, and these shepherds would make sure that they were healthy, that they were taken care of, so that that wool could be produced, and that wool could be sold for the profit of the shepherd. Now, let's look at a little bit of Old Testament background and see what this is talking about, okay? So, in Jesus' mind and in that of here's were also all the Old Testament passages that spoke of the Jewish rulers as good or bad shepherds. And yesterday, we talked about Jeremiah 23, 1 through 4. And of God as the ultimate and perfect shepherd, which we see in Psalm 23, 1. We see that in Psalm 80, verse 1. We see that in Isaiah 40, 10. And, and how does the 23rd Psalm begin? Does anybody in here know how the 23rd Psalm begins? Because it's very important that you see how that begins in order to understand what he's saying here, right? If you don't know, flip over to Psalm 23 and look at how it opens up. It says, the Lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd so they would also have remembered that god had promised to send the jewish people a messianic shepherd a second king david right so who would care for them like god himself cared for them in ezekiel 34 23 it says this ezekiel 34 23 it says this it says i will set up over them one shepherd my servant david and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. It is this prophesied messianic shepherd that Jesus identifies himself with, right? So Jesus is, is using Ezekiel 34 where it was prophesied that it says, My servant David, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. Jesus is now the fulfillment of this messianic prophecy, okay? Now, a sheepfold is where the sheep sleep for the night. It, it, it's a safe haven. Usually, shepherds would bring their flocks back to the village as the sun began to set and pin them often with two or three other flocks. So when they brought them into the town or they brought them in for the night, they would put them inside this enclosure and it would be not just your sheep, but other sheep shepherd sheep so there would be two three possibly four other shepherd sheeps in here so there could be upwards of 400 sheep inside of this enclosure now if they had taken the sheep far away they would gather them in a cave or a goalie or if these were not available they would make a pen for them out of bushes and logs so the the aim was to protect the sheep throughout the night what this enclosure was to do was keep things from coming in and keep the sheep from going out the same thing your front door does in your house it keeps people from coming in and it prevents you from going out unless you turn the knob and you open it right so we have a door this was an enclosure that the sheep were in so if the if the shepherd if the sheepfold was in the village, it would usually have a strong gate or door, right? And the Greek word can mean gate or door. So through this door, the shepherd would enter in the morning to call out his sheep. Now, thieves and robbers, in co contrast, would climb in some other way, right? And if the sheepfold were in the countryside, the shepherd himself would sleep across the entrance as a human door. See, when you put something down over an entrance, the sheep will not cross it. Did you guys know that? Did you know that that's why they have cattle bars that they lay across entrances of driveway for cattle or for sheep or whatever their herd is? When you put down these gates that are in the ground, the sheep or the herd will not cross over because they are afraid of the thing that's laying in the doorway or in the gate. Okay? So, when we start to understand this, we see that 
they would lay down to create a door if one could not be made. So these two kinds of sheepfold and entrances to them are envisioned in this uh, allegory or this parable of Jesus, what he's saying here. Now, he says, my sheep hear my voice, right? He says, my sheep recognize my voice. My sheep only understand my voice. The intimacy between the Jewish shepherd of old and his sheep is brought out most powerfully when Jesus says the sheep know the shepherd's voice and they follow him because they know his voice. That's in verse 3. What immediately comes to mind is the relationship we have with our pet dog, if we have one. Anybody in here has a pet dog, you're going to know that that dog knows the voice of its owner. Right. It doesn't it, does, it doesn't mean that it doesn't recognize other voices that come around. But the primary voice that it focuses on is the owner's command, the owner's voice, the owner's direction. Right. That's why when a canine for a police department is being trained, that canine officer has to go through the training with the dog because the dog will only respond to the canine officer's commands. OK. He's only going to respond to the canine officer's commands. So this is the kind of relationship a shepherd had with each of his sheep. The minute that these sheep heard the voice of the shepherd, their tails begin to wag. They begin to become excited. They became energized when they heard the voice of the shepherd. And when another person's voice, made, it made no impact on them. So what this story envisions is more than one flock in the sheepfold. I want to make sure you guys understand this. There's 400 sheep inside this enclosure. Okay? There's 400 sheep inside this enclosure. And when the first shepherd comes to the door, when the first shepherd comes to the door in the morning, he calls out his sheep, immediately recognize his voice, and they begin to file out. None of the other sheep begin to move. Only the sheep that belong to that shepherd begin to herd, begin to file, begin to get energized, get excited, and they begin to come out of the enclosure. The other sheep take no notice. Many people recount seeing this very thing in third world countries today where shepherds care for small flocks. Now, this is an allegory, right? It's an allegory. So Jesus is the shepherd and we, his followers, are the sheep. Our Lord is telling us that our relationship with him is to be paralleled with that of the loving, caring shepherd. And we disciples are to think of ourselves like sheep that know the shepherd's voice and follow him. Isn't this an incredible thought? Don't you, don't you really get excited when we're able to recognize our true shepherd's voice? Don't you get excited when all the other voices that we hear going on in the world are not affecting us and the only voice that we hear that matters is the voice of the shepherd? Amen. Amen. Jesus is our loving shepherd who cares for us. He knows us, right? We followed him because we've heard him call us. And when we hear his voice, we go to him. Why? Because that is our shepherd. That's the voice that we know. We should get excited to know that that's the only voice that we recognize. Now, in the first century, the shepherds had to be constantly on watch for those who would steal his sheep. And often this was done by getting into the sheepfold at night by some other way than the guarded door. And such thieves, Jesus says, come only to steal and kill and destroy. The welfare of the sheep is of no interest to them. They're out to feed themselves literally and metaphorically. The sheep do not freely follow such interlopers because they do not hear their master's voice. So who are the thieves that Jesus is allegorically alluding to? For him, they are the self-serving Jewish leaders of his day who are supposed to be good shepherds of God's people, Israel, but are only good to themselves. 
Today, the thieves are any who would snatch the fold, one of Christ's precious sheep, out of the, the herd, out of the fold, out of the sheep, out of the midst of the believer. And these are the, the militant atheists of our day. These are the many false teachers who suggest we can save ourselves by one means or another apart from Christ. These are the advocates of religions that know little of forgiveness and of the love of God. These are the Christian leaders who attract their congregation's affection away from Christ and put it onto themselves and or who preach the prosperity gospel. There are many thieves around today and their offers sound so appealing to mankind. There is, however, only one good shepherd. And it is to his voice we should listen. Now we come to Jesus' words in, in John chapter 10, verses 7 and 9. He says, I am the door. This comment envisions the shepherd sleeping across the entrance to the sheepfold, which was normal practice when the sheepfold was not an established one in the village. When the shepherd laid across the entrance, no one could enter or leave without passing over him. He was the door to the sheepfold. In this case, Jesus himself dictates the meaning of this aspect of the allegory. Entering the sheepfold alludes to entering into salvation. Jesus says explicitly, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. He then adds, I have come to give my sheep abundant life. That word abundant means more than you could ever think about, more than you could ever fathom, more than you could ever imagine. He's given you an abundance of what he has to offer, which here is life. He says abundant life. A picturesque way of, of again, speaking of salvation through Jesus Christ. Abundant life is life in all of its fullness. It's a life in relationship with God revealed in Jesus Christ and made present by the Holy Spirit. It is a quality of life that even death cannot destroy. Again, the Christological force of Jesus' word strikes us. It pricks the heart. It, it begins to speak to the marrow in our bone. Why? Why would it do that? Why would it affect us in that form or fashion? What we see, he says, he is the entrance to eternal life. He feeds us, he protects us, and he gives us life in all of its fullness. There are three things only God can do. Jesus is thus claiming both in speaking of himself as I am and in what he promises to be God incarnate. God in human flesh, God who saves, God who sustains, God who restores, God who brings life, God who brings joy, God who brings peace, God who brings love, God who brings righteousness, God who brings justification, God who brings all things that God has promised. Jesus is making this proclamation by saying he is the door. Praise God this morning. So what this passage teaches us more than anything else is that once we become part of the good shepherd's flock, he will protect us. He will feed us. This thought is given in profound words that sum up and conclude this whole section. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. See, the people did not understand when Jesus spoke of the false and true shepherd. The people didn't understand this. He said, I am the door of the sheep, right? Now in Palestine, there are two kinds of sheepfolds. The first was a large and well-structured enclosure, usually found in towns and villages, having an entrance with a gate. And at, at the entrance of that gate, there was a gatekeeper. 
There was a gatekeeper who opened and closed it when the shepherds came or brought back their sheep. It was kind of a communal fold Jesus alluded to in John 10, 1 through 6. The other kind was roughly structured, right? Nothing but rocks in a mountain pasture and into which the sheep could be driven at night. There was no door, just a two-foot gap which functioned as an entrance across which the shepherd would lay his body. Jesus laid his body because he is the gate for the sheep. He willfully laid his body on the cross because he said, I am the gate for the sheep and all that come in through me shall have eternal life. Praise God this morning. Jesus called himself the door or the gate only here. The expression of the sheep simply means he is the door by which the sheep enter. And he says that he is the door, not a door. I want you guys to pay close attention. He didn't say that he was a door. He didn't say that there was multiple doors. He didn't say that that you could come through the door on the east side or the door on the west side or the door on the south side. He said, no, I am the door. There is no other door but the door of Jesus Christ. Jesus was not suggesting that there's several doors to salvation and that he is but one. We are not to think of many ways of coming to God. Jesus is saying that he is the one way, the door by which all shepherds and all sheep must enter. The sole way to God is Jesus Christ. We deserve to die for our own sin, both physically and spiritually. We deserve to be separated from God. But Jesus laid his life on the cross who was sinless and accepted the guilt of our sin and died for us. No one else could do it, but he could and he did. Praise God. Praise God. If you look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20, it says this. It says, by a new and living way. Who is that new and living way? That's Jesus Christ. It says, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. In Ephesians 2.18, Paul wrote this. He said, through him we have access to the Father. So there's only one door. There's only one gate. According to Christ's image, and Christ himself is that door. I know that today people do not like to hear this. I know that they think that there's multiple ways to get into the kingdom of God. But the Bible says there's only one way, and the one way is Jesus Christ. People today want to subscribe to popular thought that all paths, all faiths, all religions lead to God in heaven and eternal life. But Jesus is the only gate of salvation. Only he can save a guilty sinner. There is no other way. There is no other gate. There is no other salvation. But the mere presence of a door does not guarantee that it will be used. Let me say that again. The mere presence of a door does not guarantee that it will be used. Jesus then says here, if any man enter in, See, there's an action here. You have to enter in that gate. He shall be saved. Any man, any man. This door is available for the use of any person, regardless of who he he or she is or where he or she comes from. So there's no reason why you, whoever you are, may not come into Christ's fold. The context of this parable was the healing of the man blind from birth. Having been healed by the Lord, he stood in defense of him. And as a result, was excommunicated by the Jewish religious leaders. But despite being despised and ostracized by others, he was sought out and accepted by Jesus Christ. So can you. You have that opportunity. But you must enter in. You must come to Jesus. 
You must believe on him. You must trust him. You have to trust him to receive you in order that you may be seed, be saved. John does not use the verb to save very often. You know how many times John used the verb saved? This is going to blow your mind. Does anybody know how many times John used the word, the verb saved? Well, if you don't, he only used it six times. Six times. And he uses it to denote much the same as eternal life. The two are linked in John 3, 16 and 17. Thus, Jesus is effectively saying here that the only way to eternal life is through him. So the question is, have you entered through this door? Have you come to him in order to be saved? Because Jesus promises that anyone who enters in through him will be saved. The shepherd laid down in the doorway principally to guard and not to sleep. The shepherd, the sheep of Christ have many enemies, summarized as the world, the flesh, the devil. And usually they approach with such stealth that the sheep will not hear them. The good thing for them is that their shepherd is always aware of the approach of the enemies and of their tactics. See, safety is the essential point of the sheep going in and out. Jesus is not talking about people obtaining and then losing, entering and then leaving. When we close and look, lock our doors at night, we do so to secure our home. And those that are within the home. But to be able to come in and go out unmolested was the Jewish way of describing a life that was absolutely secure and safe. Where a man could go in and go out with fear. It meant that his country was at peace. That the forces of law and order were supreme. And that he enjoyed a perfect security for his life. And so once again, we obtain salvation through Christ. A new sense of safety and of security enters into life. Our life is in the hands and care of our gracious God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thus, there is safety and security in being a Christian and being part of the household of faith and living within the sheepfold of Jesus. The Lord promises that they that enter through the door shall be saved. What are you being saved from? From the penalty and power of sin, from the self-life and Satan, from fear, from ignorance, from helplessness, from weakness. Every day we're confronted by enemies that are stronger than us and who seek to attack us. And without Christ, we will be conquered. But as the door, Jesus defends us and keeps us safe for to get at us. Satan and the other enemies of the church have to cross over Jesus. You guys, are you guys getting this picture now? Are you starting to see how Jesus says he is the door? He is laying across it. He's laying across it. They have to cross over Jesus in order to get to you. And they can't possibly be successful. So don't fear. Don't be afraid. Take courage. Take heart. For Jesus is the gate to the sheepfold, and against him Satan and sin can never prevail. Jesus continues and, and finds pasture. Palestine is a barren land for the most part, and good pasture was not easy to find. Consequently, to be assured of good pasture was a wonderful thing. So it spoke of prosperity and contentment, of health and happiness. It was in this sense that David wrote of the cure or the care of all the Lord as his shepherd in Psalm 23. And Paul could say to the Philippians, but my God in Philippians 419, Paul says this, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So just as sheep finds all its needs met when it's securely in the care of the shepherd, so the sinner will find all the nourishment his soul needs when he enters life eternal through Jesus. 
And this life is wonderful. Jesus speaks of believers having it abundantly. There is nothing cramped and limiting about the life Christ Jesus gives. Jesus came that men might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. This phrase means to have a surplus, a super abundance of a thing. So to be a follower of Jesus, to know who he is and, and what he means is to have a super abundance of life. When we come to Christ, we begin to live in the joy of the Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit. There is grace to help in every time of need and a joy that comes from constant fellowship with the Lord, which far outweighs life's inconveniences. So when Jesus said, I am the door, when Jesus said, I am the door, he was teaching us that there is only one means of receiving eternal life. Only one source of the knowledge of God. Only one source. Only one fount of spiritual nourishment. Only one basis for spiritual security. Jesus alone. When Adam sinned against God, he was sent out of the garden and shut off from God's special presence and his abundant blessings. Christ is the door, the only door. Back to that presence and abundance that was received in the Garden of Eden.